Hello and welcome to Pearls of Parmadice. My name is Courtney and I'm coming to you from Parma, Ohio, where I live with my husband, Mason, and all of our yarn. Today is Thursday, March 28th, and it is about 7 p.m. I normally podcast every other Friday morning. And you're getting evening edition Courtney today, so I don't know what to expect. Um, Good luck. Not usually as on it in the evening as I am in the morning, but welcome. If you're new here, a huge welcome. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you like what you see here, if you are into knitting, crafting, um, sometimes some Pokemon, um, all the things, uh, I'd love it if you'd stick around and subscribe. If you're returning, welcome back. I so appreciate all of you. Um, Yeah, like, subscribe, please comment. I love getting comments, um, you know, knowing what you're working on or whatever. I do my best to respond to each of them, although I'm not always able to do it in a super timely manner. I do my best. So yeah, welcome. Everything is linked down below or should be at least. Um... My Ravelry and Instagram, I'm over there as Pearls of Parmadice in both places. There will also be links to the Ravelry group, uh, the podcast email, and my Pokemon Go friend code. Yeah. So speaking of the Ravelry group, I don't know when this is going to go up, hopefully sometime tomorrow, but no guarantees. So if this does go up ahead of April 1st, um... Regardless, even if it doesn't, you should totally get in your entries to the Giant Mini Mal 2024 that we are running over on Ravelry. By we, I mean me, the royal we, whatever. Um, Yeah, get your entries in. So anything that you're making that you finished that used uh, scraps, like that were left over from something else that were 50 grams, like under 50 grams, um, mini skeins, all of that. The goal is just to use up our minis and scraps and leftovers and things. So you can hop over there or check out my Instagram for all of the details. But I am drawing for prizes quarterly. It's a year-long make-along. So I will be drawing April 1st for, I think, some patterns, I think is what we're going to do. So if you want in on that first drawing, go ahead and get your entry entries in, get your objects in. Um, the only real rule, uh, all the rule rules are over there. You can, you can go check it out. I also talked about it at length the first couple of episodes of this year. So you can also head over there, um, on my channel and listen to me talk about it if you so choose. Okay. (laughs) We are going to lose light. I can already tell the Sun is bright, but clouds have moved in the way, and I think the sun sets in like 30 minutes. So we are going to get moving here. I have two finished objects today. I have two more whips, one of which is a new cast on, and one stash addition. So I think that's it. We're going to try and move through. Also, just to go back to the mini giant mini mal real quick. I'd love it if you'd share what you're working on in relation to that on Instagram. If you're on there using the hashtag giant mini mal 2024. And um, if for whatever reason, Ravelry is not accessible to you and you can't enter your finished object over there, please send me an email um, with your finished object and just like a tiny bit about it. And I will get you entered uh, because everybody should be able to participate. So, okay. What am I wearing? You have, if you've been around, you've probably seen this. And you probably also noticed if you've been around that I am in my old location. And that's just because it was easier for me to set up here real fast after work. (laughs) But this is my Magnolia Lane cardigan by Crafts Everywhere. I don't remember the designer's real name, but that's, that's how you can find the pattern. I'll link it down below too. It is knit in... Mm, we are knitters the cotton in the colorway terracotta and this is probably my most worn knit garment I wear it a lot um yeah it's 100% cotton it's super drapey and I knit this almost a year ago I absolutely love it if you 
are looking for a good short sleeved, slightly oversized cardigan thing for spring, definitely give this one a look. It was so stinking fast and easy to knit. I would, I, I kind of want to make another one, <laughs> but I have so many other things I want to make, which I'll talk about too. Okay, finished object number one. I don't have it with me because it was a gift and it's already been given. So I, like so many others before me, made the Emotional Support Chicken by The Knitting Tree LA. I'm sure you guys have all heard about this by now. Um, I feel like I was really late to the party. But yeah, I knit one for my boss. Um, she is retiring. Saturday is her last day, but today was my last day working with her. And yesterday we had her retirement luncheon. So I gave her the chicken yesterday and she loved it. When I first saw this pattern, she was the person I thought of. I was like, oh, she would just love this. Like I just, you know, and wow, it was really fun to knit. I wasn't, I've knit some like stuffed animal kinds of things before. And they've been okay at that time in my knitting journey. I was happy with them. But looking back, um, I'm just a better knitter now. I'm a better seamer, seam sewer, sewist, whatever now. Um, you know, and that's okay. That's great. I kind of enjoy looking back at my past work and going, oh, wow, this is how far I've come. I've come so far. I just, I don't know. That's good. But this was by far the best plushy stuffed animal I have ever made. And I had so much fun. The instructions I felt were pretty clear. Um, I followed the written instructions and along in conjunction with at the same time, kind of as the video tutorial. And I really didn't have any problems. I just, I had so much fun knitting it. Um, the seaming was okay. I, I just don't like seaming. But it was fine. Like it went fine. It looked great. And she absolutely loved it. So I just used acrylic yarn, all stuff I had left over from various projects or that had been given to me. Um, so I don't really know the details on most of it. I do know my main color was uh, Red Heart Super Saver in the charcoal colorway. I know the orange was I Love This Yarn. Um... I don't know anything more than that. That was something that somebody gave me their leftovers. Uh, the yellow was some, for the beak was some random something <laughs> that I think my mom got at a garage sale in like a box of somebody's leftovers. So I don't even have a clue what that was. The red, I know, had no ball band or anything. I have no idea where it even came from. I don't know. Um, I know just by looking at it and feeling it, I know it's... Um, Karen Simply Soft. I have no idea what the colorway is. But yeah, I was so pleased to give give her this chicken. It it was great. She loves it. She already named her Eunice. So that's the name of her chicken. I let her name it. And yeah, so Eunice is in her her new home. And I'm I'm really happy about it. So that being said, I think I need to knit one for myself. I need a chicken. Doesn't everybody need an emotional support chicken? I think that might happen. I think that might happen. But I always say things are going to happen because I think in my head I have like way more time in the day and the week and the month and the year than I really do. So we'll see. I don't know. But anyway, I was so pleased to complete that. And I was so pleased that she loved it. And I was really glad it turned out as beautifully as it did. So let's finish object number one. Finished object number two. I finished my scrappy socks. And I absolutely, I get it. All of you scrappy sock knitters, I get it now. I totally get it. I didn't get it before, but I get it now. I am in love with these. These were so much fun. So these are like from a pattern. Scrappy socks. And the pattern is by Justina. I want to say it's. Lorkowska, I think that sounds right. It'll, everything's linked down below. So, um, if you're interested, you can check it out, but oh my word, 
I was so motivated to keep going on these because of all of the stripes and just get to the next, the next bit. Yeah, I love them. And they kind of, with the stripey brightness of them, remind me of Easter eggs. So I'm going to wear these on Easter. I'm so excited. Uh, all of this yarn is Fangirl Fibers. Almost all of it is from her Disney Yarn of the Month Club, except for... This one is actually by Solstice Fiber Studio, and this one is is a Fangirl Fibers yarn, but it wasn't from her Disney Yarn of the Month Club. So I'll run through the colorways one last time. This is Sisu, inspired by Raya and the Last Dragon, Tale as Old as Time, Prince Ali Ababwa, The Pink Nightmare, The Salesman, this one is Are You Satisfied With Your Care, inspired by Big Hero 6, Under the Sea, Best Day Ever, Tangled, which we watched this week, Glitch by Wreck-It Ralph, and yeah, Heels, Toes, and Cuffs were that Sisu color. I absolutely loved it. These are knit toe up, and I know if you have been here since the beginning, you know I've been a cuff down girl for a long time. I've done toe up before. This by no means is my first pair of toe up socks, but I really enjoyed knitting these. Like, I don't know. I'm not sure if it was just changing up the method that kept me interested, but I kind of am itching to do another pair of toe up socks. Who am I? Don't worry, I knit them on nine inch circulars. We're not going, we're not going that crazy. Not that far off, off of my, out of my wheelhouse, but I don't know. I kind of liked the toe up. We'll see. Who am I? What is going on? I don't know. Maybe it was just the socks too. Can you guys see each, every other section has a different a little stitch pattern that was really fun too to have something different to do to break it up anyways I am absolutely in love with these I cannot wait to wear them I finished them up yesterday and we washed them and blocked them they almost didn't get blocked last night um we were in bed like falling asleep and all of a sudden I was like oh, we never got those socks out of the water <laughs> So my husband raced down and got them out of the water and put them on my blockers for me. So yay. So these are done and I absolutely love them. If you are somebody who wants to be scrappy and wants to make a scrappy project, but you just aren't sure like how to do it, this is a great place to start, especially because you only need, I think, nine minis or scraps and I did have enough glitch um, to everyone who was concerned, including myself, about me running out. I had plenty. I had a little bit left over. Um, so it worked out great. It was totally fine. It ended up not being a problem at all. I was actually a little bit bummed that I had a little left over because I was hoping it would use up, use it all up, but that's okay. But yeah, this is like scrappy and it's meant to be scrappy. But there's a little bit of organization there that I needed. I wanted somebody to tell me when to change colors and what to do, but still get that super scrappy effect and still feel like I was knitting something scrappy. So definitely go check these out. If you want to participate in the giant mini mail and you're looking for a project or you're like, I don't know how to use these scraps. Here you go. Here you go. Make these. They're so fun. Okay. We're going to keep moving because the light is also moving. Um, so let's move on to whips. This is going to be a fast episode. I always say they're going to be fast and they never are. But this one, we're against time. Against the sun. We're racing against the sun. Okay. So I just dropped my yarn on the ground. Okay. This is the Garter Tilted Block Shawl by Marley Bird. And if you've been around for the past few months, you know I'm trying something new this year. Although I feel like next month it's all going to go out the window. We'll see. And do a pair of socks a month, a deep stash old whip each month, and then a new cast on, which might be the pair of socks. You never know. 
And then like a bonus project if I get to it kind of thing. If I finish everything else, I unlock the bonus. But I also am one to do some like, as you're going to see here in a minute, there are a few, um, there are a few cast-ons I just do every single year at the same time of year for special days or special events. And those are not going away. I, it's okay. It's okay if I cast something extra on. It's just not going to be my main focus. Anyway, this was my deep stash whip for the month of March. And, oh, I'm holding up the wrong side. Here's the right side. So you can see last time I was here where Evie is, and I have knit this much. Um, yeah, you can really see the gradient on this. I am absolutely loving how it's coming out. Like, the drape on this is incredible. It's just gorgeous. It's definitely keeping my interest with the way the colors are shifting. Um, it's garter. You do the little thing every few rows. Uh, it's got the dual spine. So yeah, I am really, really enjoying this so much. And I want it so bad. That being said, it is March 28th and I still have quite a ways to go. As you can see, I've got my needle stoppers from Solstice Fiber Studio on here. Um, it's quite scrunched up on the needles. I don't have any with a longer cord. So this is what we've got, which is, is totally fine. I still have 30-ish rows to go before I even start the tilted blocks border. And that's quite a wide border. It's not a small one. So I have no idea how many more rows I have left in this, but it's starting like on my lunch break today, which I was chatting with some people too. So I wasn't knitting as like as fast as I normally would. Um, one of my coworkers, like we just, we've both separately been playing Dream Disney Dreamlight Valley and we had no idea the other one played and we discovered it this week. And wow, we're, we're just talking about that, <laughs> like constantly. Um, and she works in a different department. So every time one of us is passing each other, we're like, did you see da 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 So anyway, I was chatting with her about Disney Dreamlight Valley in the break room for quite a while on my lunch break. Anyways, <laughs> so I, I mean, but it's getting to the point I can do like two to three rows in, a, in an hour. Um, like on a lunch break. So yeah, they're getting really long. Um, and you kind of have to, it's garter, but I have to pay attention because the yarn, which if you've seen me show this before, you know, it's like my camera doesn't really focus. I record on my phone, so it's not the best, but it's just four strands basically of like thread that is sort of loose. It's just like kind of loose and you, yeah. So it's really easy to miss one of those threads when you're knitting. So you do have to pay some attention, like more than you normally would. I guess for me at least, more than I normally would need to pay attention for just basic garter. So yeah, I don't know if this will get done this month because we have a lot going on the next few days with it being Easter weekend. I may just carry this over and try and finish it in April, but I have another deep stash whip that I already have earmarked like I'm going to work on it in April. I want to get socks done in April. And yeah, so I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, I am loving this. I really don't want to put it away. I don't think it's going to get put away. I really want it. And um, the yarn is escaping me. Red Heart, Karen, Red, mm, hang on, I might have the ball band. Why, this is what you get when you get Evening Courtney. Oh yeah, Red Heart, I knew it was Red Heart, I knew it. It's a, it's a wrap, sprinkles in the colorway French Macaron. So it's just, um, it's a cotton acrylic blend, which makes it really nice for summer and spring, which is why I really don't want to put it away. I am in full on 
which you'll see in a little bit. I'm in full on summer and spring knits mode. This winter was just gray. It wasn't that snowy for here. Um, in case you don't know, Parma, Ohio is in Northeast Ohio, right on Lake Erie, like not right on, but like very close to Lake Erie. And we usually get a lot of snow and we just didn't this year. It was just gray and blah. And that's, I love winter, but I don't love winter when it's just gray and it's not even like that, that cold to me. And it wasn't that snowy. So it was kind of a bust. I found myself not able to wear my heaviest knits very often. So I, I'm ready. I'm ready to just move on to some later knits for now. So anyways, that's that shawl. We can stop talking about it. It is living in my bag from my friend Amy of our So Good Life. She doesn't make project bags anymore, um, but I did buy this when she was making them. And I just love it. I don't care that it's a Christmas bag. This was my Christmas cast on for 2022. So that tells you how deep stash it is. I think this is the last non like scrappy blanket project um, from 2022 or before. So that's exciting. And that's the other reason I want to finish it. Okay. New cast on. If you did watch my last episode, you may know I, depending on how far you watched, if you watched Stash Editions, I had ordered a sweater quantity from Solstice Fiber Studio on their classic worsted base in the colorway Bloom to knit the Cinnabar sweater. And I don't remember the designer's name. I failed. That's okay. I'll put it, I'll put it on the screen somewhere, somewhere. Um, and I said I didn't know when I was going to cast it on. <sighs> Well, well, on the Monday after I podcasted, my husband and I were sitting around and I was all thrown off because I was working some different shifts that week. Just got thrown off. I work for a public library full time, in case you didn't know. And so usually my schedule is pretty set and the same, but occasionally um, things flip around or change. And, um, which I have a lot the next couple of months that is flipped and changed and upside down and which is totally fine, totally fine. Um, but it does throw you off. So I had opened that day and I was totally thrown off and we've had a lot of life stuff going on that I'm not going to get into, but I've just been feeling very disoriented kind of with time and space and everything. And I turned to my husband, I'm like, is it spring soon? Like, when is the first day of spring? And I Googled it, and it was the next day. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, glad I looked. So, of course, if you've been around, you know, I do a cast on every equinox and every solstice, just for fun, just a nice way to mark the changing of seasons. And I cast on the cinnabar sweater. So this is what I have so far, and I love it. It's a top-down raglan sweater. It's got these garter ridges all down the thing, the body and the sleeves. Wow, this is tired, Courtney. This is what you get. Um, and it's got these big, dramatic bell sleeves. They look really cool. I think I'm going to do the cropped length, although I'm not 100% sure. I have six skeins of this, so I definitely have enough if I choose to do the full length. I, there's several versions. There's a fitted and a not fitted and a cropped and a full length and like a bell sleeve and a like normal sleeve. I know I want to do the bell sleeves. And um, I think I want to do the crop length, but we'll see. And it's super washed, so it's probably going to grow anyway, even if I do the crop length. And no, I did not gauge swatch. I know. I know. I know. But I I don't care. It's fine. Um, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just not going to. I'm just not. But yeah, I love this. This is like the most beautiful springy pink. 
I, I just, I am absolutely, absolutely in love with this color. Sam and Megan from Solstice Fiber Studio always do such an amazing job. And if you don't know, April 12th, 7 p.m., uh, pre-orders open for their Moana collection. And if you have not seen these colorways, they've been like releasing one each day. <sighs> They're gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Um, go check out their Instagram. You can see all of the new colorways there. I can't wait. Um, I probably can't order all of them, so I'm going to need to pick one or two. I kind of think I know which one I want. Can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but oh, beautiful. Anyway, so that's this. That's my Cinnabar sweater. I would really like to have this done by the first day of summer just to have my spring cast on knit in the spring, but I'm not going to be able to wear this until fall or next winter. Anyways, most likely sometime if I finish this soon ish, if I really end up powering through, it might get somewhere. We usually have some chilly evenings, even into June sometimes. So this, it might end up being something that gets thrown on, especially if I do like a cropped length, like over a dress or something. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, there we go. That's my Cinnabar sweater. And it is living in this gorgeous, gorgeous, amazing bag that my husband got me for Christmas. And I have no idea what the bag maker's name is or their information, but I love it. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. It's right here on the tag. Um, JD Studios 480. This bag is amazing. It's so beautifully made. It's got a drawstring. It's got the snap. It's got uh, pockets. It's got this little guy, which has a key ring that you can put um, stitch markers on. I've got some light bulb markers on there that it came with. It's got this like little claspy thing. It's, it's a great, great bag. So... Okay, we are definitely losing some light. So, stash edition time. I have one. It's a sweater quantity, a t-shirt quantity. It's a t-shirt quantity. So I got a t-shirt quantity of Knit Picks Kotlin in the colorway Clarity. So it's showing up pretty accurate on the screen for the most yeah, pretty accurate. It's this super, super pale blue. Um, it's 70% tanguis. I don't know. Tangy? Tanguis? Tanguai? I don't know. Cotton? It's cotton. And then 30% linen. So I bought this quantity to make uh, the Azul by Elizabeth Smith. She um, designed it for Quince & Co., I want to say. But the yarn recommended for the pattern was a little out of my budget. So we went with this. And I think it'll work out just fine. I don't typically wear super light colors. But, and I don't knit garments in light colors uh, because spills. But I think this will be really nice. I wanted some things that were a little bit lighter to go in my wardrobe for those hot summer days. And I really, I've just found I've enjoyed my summer knits a lot more than I thought I would. When I first started knitting, I never really imagined I would be knitting myself summer things. But here we are. Here we are. So sweater quantity of that. I have no idea when I'm going to cast this on. Hopefully soonish but we all know how soonish goes. Our wedding anniversary is coming up. My birthday is coming up. So we have an eclipse coming up and I am in the path of totality. I work that day. It's going to be something else. They're saying traffic and everything is going to be really bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I feel like I need an eclipse cast on, especially because I could see being stuck at work longer because I can't get home. We'll see. 
I need an eclipse cast on, right? I mean, when else am I going to be in the path of totality for an eclipse? Probably never. I better cast something on. That's what one does in these situations, right? We cast a thing on. I think that needs to happen. I don't know if it'll be this or not. We'll see. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, the sun is actually setting. So really quick. Um, what else do we have going on? Reading and watching has been basically the same. Although there is one podcast I wanted to mention, and now I'm not entirely sure of the name of it. I want to say it's Sheila Bobby Knits. I know Sheila Bobby is in the name of the podcast. Anyways, I discovered her. I believe her name is Caitlin. Um, and I am so sorry if I'm getting all of this wrong. I'm probably getting like 100% of this wrong. But I'm going to go ahead and link her down below. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, she's a smaller podcast. It's a, I don't know how new. Um, but I just discovered her recently. And I'm really enjoying her episodes. I've also been watching um, Witchin' Knittin' Mama. I'm so bad at remembering like this stuff when it's this late. I don't know. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's the name of the podcast. I'm doing great. <laughs> but I really liked that one. Um, been watching The Cat Lady, Craft All the Things, uh, Ambie Marie Knits, Kay the Crazy Sock Lady, The Usual, A Homespun House. Molly posted a new uh, vlog, I think today. And I watched that. That was nice. Amber of a Lovely Yarn podcast. I love her podcast. Hers was, I think, one of the first, if not the first netting podcast I watched. She was the first one I binged every episode. Love her podcast. I believe she dropped a new episode today. Yeah. Anyway, that's, that's about it. I haven't even watched all that many, to be honest. Um, yeah, still reading the same things. We are almost done with the Lisa Jewell book and loved it. Um, None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. Probably the best produced audiobook I have ever listened to. It was, it, it, it has been great. We have probably five minutes left on it and just didn't finish it. Um, yeah, so that's it for reading and watching. Like I said, we watched Tangled. Life stuff. We've had another couple of busy weeks. This weekend is Easter. So we are getting together with some family. Um, trying to just prep for the month ahead. Like I said, my boss's um, last day is this weekend. So um, big transitions going on at work. Uh, we also have a lot of people out over the next couple months, including me, for vacations and things like that. So I am anticipating that being a lot. Um, starting sewing classes in April, but we'll we'll talk about that kind of thing next time. Um, now, the next time I podcast, that was another thing I should have mentioned in admin, but I guess I'm going to mention it here because I didn't mention it there. I don't know when the next one will be exactly. Um, in a couple weeks, April 12th is when I would normally podcast, but that is our wedding anniversary. So we both, um, are taking a long weekend and I don't know, I might podcast that day. You might get another Thursday night, Courtney on April 11th. Um, yeah, I don't know yet. I will probably podcast that weekend. I don't see a world where I don't podcast at some point, but it may not be on the Friday. I don't know. We'll just see. I think the next couple months are going to be play it by ear months. But, okay, I think that's everything. Um, sorry this is a shorter episode if you like the longer ones. My phone is going to die soon, though, so I don't want to ramble any longer. And um, you're welcome if you're always like, she talks too much and it's too long. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for spending some time with me tonight, today, this morning, this afternoon, whenever you're watching. Um, I hope that you 
have a great rest of your week and next couple of weeks until we meet again. And yeah, let me know what you're working on down below. Do you, are you doing an eclipse cast on if you're in the path of totality or near enough to be like impacted by it? Um, if you are, and you already have like an eclipse cast on planned, let me know what it is because I need ideas. Um, yeah. Or maybe you are like, what eclipse? I'm not in the path of totality. I don't know anything about this. Um, yeah. So let me know. Let me know what you're working on. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I will see you next time. And I hope that you get some time over the next couple of weeks to enjoy crafting or knitting in your little corner of paradise. And I'll just be over here knitting away in my little corner of paradise. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.